Hey guys, Joe here. Today I am super excited to share with you a bag I've wanted since I was a kid. A bag that is iconic from war and film. A bag that is older than my grandmother. Today we're just doing a right old talk about the Mark 7 gas mask bag from 1942. This thing was used in World War II, a very critical piece of equipment, especially at the dawn of chemical and biological warfare. This thing was also very famously used, probably what is best known for today, in the Indiana Jones film franchise. And this specific version, the W&G brand variant of the Mark 7, is the only brand confirmed to have been used in one of the films, specifically Raiders of the Lost Ark, my favorite film, and what I think is probably the best film. Fight me in the comments below and tell me what your favorite one is. Now, with this bag, this is not a replica. This is an original, and it's in crazy pristine condition. I thought this was a replica when I first got it, but I started looking at it and some of the imperfections and things to it. It's definitely a genuine issue. I've shown it to some other people as well that also believe that. So I am very, very pleased to have gotten one of these and gotten one that is so awesome. Now, the stock on these guys is dwindling. So if you've been thinking about picking one up like I have, I would definitely encourage you to get one. But one thing you got to know is if you want the W&G version, that Indiana Jones as close as you can get type bag, you're going to be paying quite a bit of money for it. Standard Mark 7 bags are right around $35, $40. The stocks are dwindling, but not that fast. So you still have time to get those. However, the W&G versions, these are clocking in right around $85, $90, $110 over at Magnolia Clovier. Because these are so popular from the film franchise, because the stocks are so limited, and obviously they're not making any more, they're 80 years old, these are very, very expensive. They're very, very hard to find. Magnolia, I believe, still has it. Magnolia, pardon me. And I think that What Price Glory might still have four of these. And once they're gone, they're gone. So if you want one, stop this video go get one because once they're gone they're gone forever now with these bags these were kind of like a modern version of something we would all have known at the time from previous wars and the civil war and the revolutionary war they carried something that you know isn't too crazy different on the outside if you take it from that angle they carried something like this now this is not an original this is not even a formal replica this is just a crappy one that i made but this is a haversack and i styled it after museum photos i saw of ones from the revolutionary war and the civil war and they were very very simple they were literally just quickly stitched together pieces of cloth very two-dimensional very slim they had a flap with two to three buttons sometimes they were metal buttons sometimes they were just antler it really depended on how poor the soldier was typically union soldiers were more wealthy had more properly made bags confederates were more poor and had things that were more diy so that is important if you are someone who does recreational stuff involving civil war reenactments Revolutionary War period is kind of all over the place. The United States did have established textiles, so there are some very well-known ones that are still in museums today that survived. This is just what they would have looked like. But with World War I, World War II, the advancements in technology and the advancements in need from threats, they started building bigger bags, more durable bags, things that could hold all the unnecessary equipment that they needed. And a gas mask bag was critical to the World War era. This was the dawn of chemical and biological warfare, something that was literally one of the most horrifying things to ever happen. It still is the most horrifying thing in the world, in my opinion, outside of nuclear warfare. It is terrifying what those chemicals can do to the body, what those biological agents can do to the body. So they needed to make sure every soldier that would be at risk had something that would work but they were still very down and dirty a little bit rustic this has imperfections on it but it was still just such an important piece of kit after world war ii there was a bunch of these left over and so what price glory magnolia clothier they bought as many as they could and they did some sort of magical voodoo to make them stay pristine over all of these years because this thing is just excellent so one thing to note is that obviously the Indiana Jones version of this bag, it had a leather strap. Well, I have a leather strap as well. It's right here. This is about identical to what Indiana used. I just haven't put it on the bag yet. If you want to see what it looks like with the leather strap on, on my body, I'll be showing pictures of that over on Instagram. So I'll link that in the description below. I'm going to do my best to try to preserve this strap. Again, this is 80 years old. I don't want to just cut it off and throw it away. I want to minimize my waste and repurpose this in some way. Maybe use it on another DIY bag where maybe I try to make a replica of this and I can use the original strap, 
something like that. So I'm going to go through and just unstitch it and try to preserve the strap the best I can. If you've got any ideas what I should do with the strap, let me know about that in the comments below as well. Let's look at it a little bit closer. Now, the W and G variant is a little bit unique, and that's why they were able to positively identify this in an Indiana Jones film. Specifically, it was made out of a specific color of linen, and a lot of the other bags were using different colors, different materials like proper canvas, and so it just stuck out enough, stood out enough for someone to be able to go, yep, that is for sure a Mark 7 from W and G. So that's why they were able to make this the only brand that could be identified, because the other ones were very mismashy and you couldn't quite tell which one was which versus this one. So mine came in amazing condition. The hardware, not a bit of rust on them, a little bit of patinaing and stuff, but no actual rust. If you look at the inside of that, those are still just as shiny as they would have been from day one. I'm 100% gonna hit this tripod about 500 times, I apologize. Those are amazing. It had a bathtub bottom to help protect it, and you have these drainage holes here to the main compartments in case it got wet which is really cool. Now the big difference between the Mark 7 and previous versions like the Mark 6 and Mark 5 is there's no external pockets. All the pockets are internal and it's gonna be hard to see that from the inside. So the one inside pocket in the back is clearly an open pocket, but the one on the other side is not only shallower, which they cut off here, but also offset. So they really kind of tried to size them to what they were using. You have this metal doohickey here and this wad of original string, rope, whatever you want to call it there. And what they would do is they would wrap this rope around the body and tie it off over here so the bag wasn't bouncing around on the shoulder's chest, potentially getting snagged, lost, or making noise. Now on the inside, we have this lip. That's kind of the money shot there. You have the Mark 7, you have the W and G Limited. 1932 is when the company was established. The bag was made in 1942. There is an S there. I'm assuming that means September, but if you're a World War II person, let me know. The 172 in an arrow, that was probably an auction number or a lot number. That is not what it would have left the factory with, most likely, if I had to guess. Uh, you never know. Someone, if you know what that is, let me know. Now, you had this kind of general front pocket. You had an offset in pocket where this was larger, that was shorter, in terms of, you know, width. Then you have this string pocket here. This also has the original string, and this would have been used to tie off to an important piece of equipment here where you could just yank the string and pull the equipment out without having to dig through the bag. You have the large back pocket, and you have the shallow, shorter, or narrower pocket right there. This is just a quick look at it. I wanted to show you guys it before I tear off the strap. It's something I wanted to share with you guys because you're the ones that pushed me to finally get one. I've wanted one of these since I was knee-high to a grasshopper. Indiana Jones was one of my idols growing up until I unfortunately learned adventuring isn't an actual job unless you're a trust fund kid, but something that really had an influence on me, wanting to get outdoors, wanted to explore. Him and Steve Irwin are why I am the way I am today. So it was really cool to finally have the same bag that Indiana had. Uh, so this is really special to me and I'm really glad I finally pulled the trigger. And I would encourage you, if you want one of these, get one. Because the general stocks are going down, the WG variant stocks are very down, and they're not making these anymore. You can't get them anymore after they're gone. So hopefully this was cool and entertaining to you guys. Stay safe, stay informed, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Doodles!